Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to The Daily Race. So glad to have you here joining with me as I start my day, you start your day, and we're doing it intentionally with some time with God. Uh, looking to his word for some, some guidance, some direction, some encouragement today. Uh, I'm not sure what today holds for you, what your calendar has scheduled, um, what unexpected things are going to come, but, but here's what I know. When we start our day with God, uh, we walk into it aware of his presence. We don't have to ask God for his presence. He is with us. That's the big theme we've been seeing through the life of Joseph over the last, last week or so here. God was with him. During tough situations, during great situations, God's presence was made known through the whole time. And it kept him encouraged. It kept him walking in faith. Now today, uh, we're going to continue the count here in chapter 46. Joseph has just revealed himself to his brothers who came all the way to Egypt to get food. They thought Joseph was dead, even though they sold him to slavery. You know, didn't think that he lasted that long or he's long. They, they'd never see him again, but yet, there he is. He reveals himself to them. He's the one that saves them. And now he says, go back and get dad. Bring the whole family here. Everyone, get him here to Egypt. There's still five more years in the famine. Go get dad. And then he tells them, don't. Don't mull this over. Don't keep talking about this. He knows the blame game will start among them when they start going back. He says, just, just go get dad. Now, I can't imagine how they broke that news to dad. I mean, it's the greatest news in the world that Joseph is, not, is alive, but the worst news in the world that they have to admit that they lied to their dad all these years. Uh, we're not given insight into that conversation. All we pick up is that Jacob immediately says, let's go. Let's go to Egypt. I'm going to pick it up here in verse 46 because what Jacob does on the way to Egypt is so important. It's what puts this in God's big story of what he's doing. These aren't just little random narratives of, of biblical characters. God's redemptive plan is taking place. So let's look here in, in, in chapter 46. It says, so Jacob set out for Egypt with all his possessions and he came to Beersheba. He offered sacrifices to the God of his father, Isaac. During the night, God spoke to him in a vision. Jacob, Jacob, he called. Here I am, Jacob replied. I am God, the God of your father, the voice said. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for there I will make your family into a great nation. I will go down with you to Egypt, and I will bring you back again. You will die in Egypt, but Joseph will be with you to close your eyes. God's promise, I'm gonna make you a great nation. He re-echoed, he, he told Jacob that much earlier in his life, before he ever had kids, before he was ever married, when he was fleeing his brother's threats, uh, he relayed the promise that he had given his grandfather Abraham. If you would trust in me, I'm gonna create out of you a great nation, I'm gonna give you a land, and the whole world will be blessed. He reconfirms this to Jacob as he's going down to Egypt. He's like, don't worry, this, you're leaving the, the promised land, the land that I promised you, but I will bring you back because it's part of the promise. And while you're down in Egypt, I will make you a great nation. Once again, it's God's redemptive plan that there are these amazing little, little stories and these accounts of what, what God's doing in the lives of these people, but the overarching story is that God's bringing salvation through one of Abraham's descendants that goes through the line of Isaac and Jacob. And we're gonna to continue to follow that family line here through the Old Testament. That's the point. It says, so Jacob left Beersheba and his sons and took them to Egypt. They carried him and their little ones with them and their wives in the wagons that Pharaoh had provided for them. They also took all their livestock and their personal belongings they had acquired in the land of Canaan. So Jacob and his entire family went to Egypt, sons and grandsons, daughters and granddaughters, and all his descendants. I'm gonna skip ahead here a little bit. It says, as they entered their destination, Jacob sent Judah ahead to meet Joseph and get directions to the region of Goshen. When he finally arrived there, Joseph prepared his chariot and traveled to Goshen to meet his father, Jacob. When Joseph arrived, he embraced his father and wept, holding him for a long time. Finally, Jacob said to Joseph, now I am ready to die since I've seen your face again and know that you are still alive. What a beautiful homecoming, right? They're, they're reconciled, the father, the son. Not reconciled because of things that they've done, but reconciled out of circumstance, out of loss. The son who he thought was dead is alive. Man, what could make a father more joyful than that? He literally says, if nothing else happens the rest of my life, it's full. It's full at this point. Joseph then takes Jacob down to meet Pharaoh. <laughs> go, go meet the boss, right? And it says that Jacob blesses Pharaoh in that point. 
that as Jacob walks in, Pharaoh sees him as, as a man of, of wisdom, as a man of, of old age, of honor, and Jacob blesses Pharaoh, the most powerful man in the world at that point. He has all of the wealth, all of the power, all of the control, and Jacob blesses him, gives him God's blessing. Part of this is that they are allowed to stay in the area of Goshen, separated. Uh, they're shepherds. Egyptians don't like shepherds, so they let them stay separated. And that's, that's part of how you grow into a great nation. If they just incorporated into everyday life there in Egypt and just assimilated amongst the Egyptians, um, that wouldn't have been God's plan. How do you pull people out that have been all tied together with everyone else? No, part of God's plan was to keep them in Egypt, protect them, save them, but preserve them as a people. Let them grow and multiply and become the nation that God promised Jacob, Isaac, and Abraham. That's the account we're looking into here uh, throughout the old, whole entire Old Testament as we walk through it. Every, every time we come back to Old Testament passages, uh, we're going to look at how does this tie to Jesus? How does this point towards God's redemption? How does this point towards the Savior there? God always fulfills his promises. Uh, he does. So here's the question today. How is your life part of God's redemption story? Now, God is bringing mankind to himself. God wants a relationship with people, and he's placed us as part of that story. That there are people in your life, relatives, friends, coworkers, that need to be introduced to Jesus. Now, we're not, we can't make a decision for them. We can't force them. But the way that we live our life, uh, the way that we show integrity and love to the people around us, demonstrate Jesus to them. Uh, let's people see Jesus in our lives. And, and then there are opportunities where we get to articulate that. We get to share with them why we have a relationship with Jesus and what a difference he's made in our life. We look at these accounts of, of Jacob and Joseph and think, wow, how amazing to be part of God's story. You are part of God's story. You have a role to play in pointing Jesus to the Savior that all of these people we've been introduced to over the last couple of weeks have had that role of pointing people towards Jesus in the future. So you have a mission. You have a role to play today. I'm gonna to pray that you would play your part perfectly. Lord, we love you. We are so grateful that you have such a grand plan of, of bringing humanity to yourself, of, of saving us. Even though we've turned away, even though we, we've fallen short, God, the saving power of Jesus, and the fact that you gave up your life for the forgiveness of our sins, God, we live in response to that as forgiven people. So God, may we demonstrate that love that you gave us to others. May we point people to you each and every day. May we remember that we are part of your story. And not creating our own stories, and not, not creating our own subplots, but God, incorporating everything we do into what you are doing. We love you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Well, hey, I hope you have a great rest of the day, and I look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now on the next Daily Race. Love you guys.